Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to our expert interview. I'm joined today by Vishen Pillay, who is the managing partner at Varaya Wellness, and they are a holistic wellness company that focus on the full ambit of people wellness, really both for organizations and individuals. Thank you very, very much for joining us, Vishen. Thank you very much, Oliver, for having me. All right, I think let us jump straight into it. So you've been seeing some really interesting and sometimes scary things around hybrid working arrangements. And in your view, how has hybrid working affected the mental health of employees? Oliver, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, we've seen all the different discussions around what type of work arrangements work best, and hybrid work arrangements are definitely here to stay. But when we consider the mental health of employees, um, it hasn't really changed more than the actual culture of the organizations that the individuals work for. Um, you know, we, we use the term culture eat strategy for breakfast and um, it's, it's overused in many instances. But it is really applicable in a situation like this where there's a hybrid work environment because those toxic work cultures which existed prior to us going into remote work or hybrid work arrangements permeates the actual distance of the employees from uh, the rest of the teams and it adds to the employee experience in terms of stress and anxiety and burnout, which are some of the critical things that people are experiencing out there. And this is uh, increasing day by day. Um, you know, we've, we've, we talk a lot about um, proximity bias and whether people are close to us uh, and how that affects how we see them and how they perform. And it's the same when it comes to employee well-being. As soon as it's um, the employee is not in our line of sight every day, we all of a sudden have this wall about it and we don't have to care about the actual person that we're working with. Um, and again, this speaks to the company culture and whether that is something that um, has been uh, implemented in such a way where people care about the people that they work with. So, I mean, for example, you've got introverts who we're in uh, office environments and all of a sudden started working from home and they started thriving more than they did in an office environment because they could be reclusive. They didn't have to uh, spend so much energy on engaging with people face to face. And this saw a rise of um, introverts being promoted in organizations, right? And now we move to a hybrid environment and all of a sudden these staff members are experiencing greater stress and anxiety. And again, the culture of the organization hasn't adapted to that. It hasn't said, well, um, what works best for the individual and how are we uh, bringing out the best of our employees regardless of the situation that they're in? And there's statistics in South Africa which show that um, close to 40% of employees have experienced an increase in stress and depression. And when we talk about stress, it's not just the traditional uh, concept of stress, but it would include your fatigue and burnout as well. Um, and when you look at a hybrid working environment, there isn't the compartmentalization of saying, this is the office and this is home and I can switch off between the two. Now you've got people that are um, three days a week having to work and live in a space. And then on two days they can switch off. And this has an impact on their mental health as well. So these are just some of the things that have resulted in um, the, the well-being of employees being challenged given the rise of a hybrid working environment. Absolutely. Uh, really fascinating insights there. And I think uh, one of the findings in our new ways of working uh, uh, a report that was published for 2022 uh, really indicates, at least initially, that there are potentially some productivity gains that are to be had given hybrid working arrangements. I think what uh, 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 what you're saying is that there's a whole part of hybrid working, potentially a dark side of hybrid working that we aren't yet aware of, and that there are certain employee personas perhaps that are better suited to certain kinds of arrangements. How do we go about remedying the situation? How do we cater for those different personas essentially? 
The first thing is that we need to train our leaders in an organization to manage the new work arrangements properly. Um, and this means that there needs to be transparency. We need to break down the whole working in silos concept um, and we need to stop being inconsistent. These uh, concepts were existent before COVID and they should stay there, you know, um, in terms of the lack of transparency, working in silos and the inconsistency that needs to stay in the past. Now we need to have leaders who are trained um, and then able to be able to serve the employees that I'm that they are meant to lead effectively um, for the, for the present circumstances. So if they are in a hybrid working environment, are we having the conversations that matter? Are we measuring productivity? Are we maintaining an environment that's conducive to all the employees? And that starts uh, with the next part, which is communication. Once we streamline the communication to allow for this human connection to take place, because we ultimately work with people, Oliver, not robots. And I mean, for the most part, uh, uh, even robots can mimic concern these days. Um, so with the support of these leaders um, who actually care, um, we use the word empathy too loosely these days, but to actually have a conversation that matters, um, asking somebody how they are um, and deeply expressing concern for that rather than just skating over it um, and then equipping those leaders with the tools to be able to continue those conversations and then implement the strategies we're able to tackle the work and communication confidently and ultimately the teams reap the benefit of it in totality, we need to take a more holistic approach to wellness. Um, and a lot of organizations have just um, used wellness as a tick box exercise. So we have an EAP program in place, and that is now everything that we need to do to support our employees from a well being perspective. But that isn't actually the case. We need to actually shift the stigma around mental illness. We need to understand the root cause of the problem. Um, people don't just wake up one day depressed. Um, you know, there are circumstances that lead to that. People don't wake up and decide to be burnt out today. There are other things that go on. And it's not always just related to the work environment. There could be financial constraints that are resulting in their mental uh, state of being uh, in the way that it is. Um, they could be experiencing physical ailments. They could have strained personal relationships. Or perhaps they could even have limited career aspirations and the opportunities are limited out there in the economy for them. So only once we really go to the root of that and we look at wellness from uh, the six pillars of wellness rather than just a mental uh, wellness perspective, can we find a solution that fits and that's how we move forward. Thank you so, so much, Vishen, for those wonderful insights. Folks who are watching, please contribute to the discussion in the chat section of the LinkedIn post. Uh, we would be happy to engage with you further there. And we look forward to seeing you next year for our first expert interview of 2023. Thank you very much and have a good day.